Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Chapter 3, Concluded, Journey Toward the House Beautiful. Prudence says, What gives you such a strong desire to go to Mount Zion? Oh, I want to be with him who gave himself for my sins and is giving me eternal life. I want to be with those who are like him and be free from pain and trouble and iniquity forever. Have you a family, asked Charity. Christian said, yes, I have a wife and four children. And why did you not bring them along with you? Christian started weeping and said, oh, how gladly would I have done so, but they all were so utterly averse to my coming. But did you talk to them and try to show them the sinfulness of the place and the danger of staying behind? And did you plead with them to come along with you? Yes, with all my power. I told them also what God had revealed to me of the destruction of the place. But I seemed to them as one who mocked, and they would not believe me. But did you pray to God that he would bless your message to them? Yes, with all the earnestness of my soul and all the love of my heart for my wife and children are very dear to me. But did you tell them of your own sorrow and fear of destruction? Yes, over and over again, often weeping. But what did they say? Did they tell you why they would not come? My wife said it was foolish to give up the whole world for a fancy, and my children were completely wrapped up in their present joys, the trivial things of youth. But did your own vain life nullify your earnest persuasion and destroy your testimony? Well, indeed, I cannot commend my life, for I am conscious of many failings, and I realize a person by his daily living may annul his good arguments and persuasion. Yet I was very careful not to give my family any occasion for offense at my unseemly conduct. I did not want them to be averse to going with me, but they often told me that I was too precise, that I denied myself of things for their sake in which they could see no evil if they saw anything in me that hindered them from accepting the truth and coming with me it was my extreme carefulness not to sin against god or do any wrong to anyone charity responded indeed cain hated his brother because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous if your wife and children were offended at you for that, they proved themselves impervious to true righteousness, and you have delivered your soul from responsibility for their condemnation. In this way, they sat talking until dinner was ready. Then they all went into the dining room and sat down to eat. The table was laden with good things. Their conversation at the table was about the Lord of the hill, what he had done and how he had built that house. And from what they said, Christian perceived that he had been a great hero in battle. He had fought and slain the one who had the power of death. That is the power to bring death to the whole human race. Yet he had accomplished this with great danger and suffering to himself. They said what Christian had already come to believe that their hero had achieved victory over the enemy of the race by the loss of his own blood and that he did it out of pure love for the country. Some of them at the table declared that they had seen him and talked with him since he died on the cross and they implied that they had this story from his own lips that he has such love for pilgrims in this wilderness journey as is not found in any other person in the universe. They said that he had given up all his wealth and power, stripped himself of his glory, and made himself of no reputation, that he might help the poor and sinful and provide for them a rich inheritance in a land of a faceless, fadeless day. They recall they had heard him affirm that he would not dwell in the mountains of Zion alone. They said, moreover, that he had made princes of many pilgrims who had been beggars. They sat and talked till late at night. Then after they had prayed and committed themselves to their keeper, they retired for the night. 
Christian slept in a large upper room with a window facing toward the sunrise. The name of the room was Peace. He slept till break of day. In the morning, they all rose early, and after more enjoyable discourse, they told Christian that he should not leave until they had shown him some of the rare things of the place. First, they took him into the study and showed him the records of antiquity, the genealogy of the master of the hill, which revealed that the master was the son of the ancient of days and had an eternal lineage. Here were the records of his accomplishments and the names of many hundreds he had placed in his service, giving them permanent, everlasting habitations. Then they read to him some of the worthy deeds of his servants, how they had subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, how they were made strong in weakness and waxed valiant in fight and turned to fight the armies of the aliens. In other records, they read how willingly the Lord was to receive into his favor anyone, even those who had offered strong affronts to his person and his proceedings. Here also were other records of noble deeds of righteous characters of the past, which Christian viewed along with attested prophecies and true predictions of things sure to take place in the confounding of unbelievers and the consolation of faithful pilgrims on their way to the better land. The next day they took him into the armory where he saw all kinds of equipment for soldiers in the Holy War, swords, shields, helmets, breastplates, effectual prayer, and shoes that would never wear out. They told him that the ruler of the hill had enough of this equipment to furnish every person who desired to resist evil in his progress to the promised land. No matter how great the number who needed such equipment, there was enough for all. They also showed him some of the instruments with which old pilgrims had done valiant feats. Moses' rod, the hammer and nail with which Jael slew Sisera, and the pitch it, pitchers and trumpets and lamps with which Gideon put to flight the armies of Midian, the ox's goad that Shamgar killed 600 aliens with, a jawbone with which Samson destroyed a whole army of Philistines the sling and stone that brought down the mighty giant Goliath used by young David, and many, many notable things in the army of the Lord. This done, they went to their rest again. Then I saw in my dream that on the morrow, Christian got up to go on his way, but they persuaded him to stay until the next day. Tomorrow, if the day is clear, they promised, we will show you the delectable mountains which because they are beautiful and much nearer you desire, your desired haven will lift your spirit, give you a stronger desire to go there and courage for your journey. So Christian consented to stay. Next day when the sun was high, they took him to the top of the building and told him to look far away to the east at a great distance. Christian could see a magnificent mountainous country. In this faraway land were great forest green vineyards, sparkling fountains, broad fields, beautiful valleys, miles of fruit orchards, and marvelous landscapes of golden grain. Very attractive indeed. He asked the name of the country. They said, it is Emmanuel's land, and it is for all pilgrims, just as this hill is. From there, you will be able to see the gate of the celestial city, as the shepherds there will show you. He expressed his desire to go, and they were willing, but first they suggested, let us go again to the armory. There they equipped him from head to foot with what he would need most in his journey. Being thus clothed, he walked out with his friends to the gate. He asked the porter at the gate if he had seen any pilgrims pass. pass. Yes, said the porter, one passed a little while ago. Did you know him, asked Christian? No, I asked his name, and he said it was faithful. Christian, oh, I know him. He is my close neighbor. He comes from my hometown. How far do you think he may be down the road by now? 
He must be to the foot of the hill by this time. Well, good, Porter, said Christian. May the Lord be with you and bless you abundantly for all the kindness you have shown to me. Then he resumed his journey. Discretion, piety, charity, and prudence accompanied him to the foot of the hill. They went on talking till they came to the brow of the hill. Then observed Christian, I thought it was difficult coming up the hill, but it looks as if it's going to be more dangerous going down. Yes, it really is, agreed Prudence. It is especially hard for one after being on this hill for a while to go down into the Valley of Humility without slipping at times. This is why we came along to go with you to the bottom of the hill. Now Christian walked very carefully, yet he did slip a time or two. At the foot of the hill, Christian's good companions gave him a loaf of bread, a bottle of wine, and a large bunch of raisins, bidding them goodbye. He went on alone.